people wonder whether Revelation gives us a kind of um, predictive look at the future of the world. Uh, and certainly Revelation does look out into the future because it culminates with the coming of the New Jerusalem and the end of all things. What many people don't realize is that Revelation doesn't give us a kind of blow-by-blow -blow description of the end. That's often the way it's portrayed in, in popular media as a kind of step-by-step -step prophecy. In the book of Revelation itself, uh, prophecy is never equated with prediction. If you look up uh, the words for prophesy, if you look up the words for prophet in Revelation, a prophet is regularly somebody who bears witness, who bears witness to the truth of God, um, who bears, uh, calls the world to repentance, um, but it's never a, a sense in which it gives you a step-by-step -step indication of what is coming. When you move into Revelation itself, you also find that it doesn't move in a straight line. Uh, for example, it begins with the story of, or look at seven churches, uh, then it takes you up into heaven for a glimpse of God and the Lamb. It brings you back into a kind of an earthly sphere as you find the four horsemen come prancing out of the uh, visions in the book. But then the action is again interrupted as you're taken back into a heavenly scene to look at the uh, great multitude giving praise to God around the throne. The book moves forward, moves to heaven, comes back to earth. It moves in a non-linear way. And as people try and turn it into a linear prediction, they really miss the genius of the book, which is that it's not that it gives you a step-by-step -step indication of what's coming toward the end. Rather, it gives you a sense of who is God, who is the Lamb, and where is it all going. And it does so without giving you the confidence in knowing that I can predict, blow by blow, how it's going to happen. Rather, it gives you a sense of confidence in knowing who is the God and who is the Lamb in whose hands the future finally belongs.